Well, that escalated fast, didn't it? I cover a lot of stuff on this channel regarding the state of free speech and the infestation of social justice in college campuses in the West. It's everywhere. Miley Annopolis is no stranger to taking on SJWs, and his university tours are known for attracting ugly protests, but mostly these protests simply demonstrate how intolerant and mentally unhinged social justice really is. Well, they've been throwing around the everyone I don't agree with is a Nazi, racist, bigot thing for long enough, and it seems they feel sufficiently motivated now to escalate things into full-blown violence. Very worrying indeed. The ones who keep violently expressing how peaceful they are and how they aren't the fascists, strange how their violent, intolerant, authoritarian mindset is the precise definition of fascism. Hmm. And we think that it's embarrassing that Chancellor Dirks is allowing a fascist that promotes violence against women, against gay and trans people, against minorities, and against immigrants, especially right now. This is such a joke. When did Milo ever agitate for violence against anyone? Seriously, it's terrifying that these people can just simply label you something that you aren't, and that's it. You are that thing. No due process. But because you are that thing, you're getting shut down. Full-on censorship and at Berkeley of all places. Tensions are high after Trump's election, that's true. But that's not Trump's fault, or Milo's fault for that matter. It's the leftist university professors and the mainstream media stoking division through the promotion of outright slander, misrepresentation, fake news, and mass hysteria. These SJWs are turning back the clock on people's civil rights before your very eyes. Hate speech! Hate speech is not free speech! Hate speech is not free speech. Sound familiar? Same old, same old. These people have learned nothing. Who defines what hate speech is? I'm tired asking that question. So you're the moral arbiter of everything, right? <laughs> These people want to break down the barrier between words and violence. Okay, so they will justify their own violent behavior, blaming it on you, of course, by saying the words of other people with views they don't like are a form of violence against them. So it's easy for them to rationalize this escalation to full-blown violence, and once they've labeled someone fascist because everyone they disagree with is literally Hitler, then in their minds, you've become dehumanized. So they no longer view you as someone they need to have compassion or empathy for anymore. Trump must go by any means necessary. Right, well, that's quite ominous. You might say incitement even. By the way, this tweet is from Sarah Silverman. Okay, so she says, Wake up and join the resistance. Once the military is with us, fascists get overthrown. Mad King and his handlers go bye-bye. An incitement to a military coup, it seems. And I said to Jack Dorsey, she won't get banned on Twitter. Not that I want her to be, but because she's a leftist and famous, she won't get suspended. Now, I don't believe people should be censored for this kind of stuff because I want to hear from them. I want to know the people to avoid. But Facebook and Twitter are becoming like social justice infested college campuses. The same thought crime rules apply there. And then our movement that started, that is fighting by any means necessary to get rid of Donald Trump and anybody who supports his program of racist scapegoating of immigrants, of women, of gay people in America. I can't take this anymore. Seriously, dude, while you're calling gay people and women a race, apparently, and attempting to talk on behalf of them, even though a shit ton of women voted for Trump. Okay, just so you know, Milo is gay. You know that, right? No? Or, or you just don't care because he's not on your team. He's the wrong kind of gay, apparently. You just censored a gay man. You know you did that, right? But it doesn't count because he's conservative. And he says things, which need to be said, by the way, which make you uncomfortable. And again, women and gay people and trans people, they're not a collective group, all right? They're individuals who speak for themselves. They don't need a banner. They don't need a slogan. They don't need a movement to speak on their behalf. They don't need you or your poisonous, divisive cult of identity politics to speak for them. They're free from your Borg hive mind. So enough of this crap. Okay, Berkeley was set upon, okay, last night, 1st of February, 2017, by people who are not liberal in any way, shape, or form. Okay? They are thugs. On Wednesday night, fires blazed across the University of California Berkeley campus, the site of the student free speech movement of the 1960s, as protesters violently derailed the finale of Milo's college lecture tour. In 1964, Berkeley student Mario Savio addressed his peers in a speech about the importance 
of free speech and open discussion on college campuses. Wow. In his address, Savio argued that the university must return to its intended function where students are invited to explore all ideas, both radical and mainstream, freely and without fear of social or academic repercussion. What a difference 50 years has made. Well, guess what, morons? You just outed yourself as the real fascists here. And what's more, because you're hopelessly lacking in life experience and common sense, you don't realize you've just censored someone publicly, which means you've just spread his message globally. Well done. As Trump said following this on Twitter, if UC Berkeley does not allow free speech and practices violence on innocent people with a different point of view, no federal funds, and rightly so. And of course, the media will say it's Trump's rhetoric. It's inciting hate. It's making people protest. These aren't protests. They're politically motivated riots and innocent people are getting hurt. The only people responsible for this violence are the people who committed the violent acts. They have their own individual agency. It seems now that social justice has entered its final phase, which is to say it is done with morally badgering, hectoring, and lecturing people, okay? It's recognized that it's lost all of the arguments. All that's left is for it to reveal itself for what it is, what it has truly always been. Tyranny wrapped in nice sounding rhetoric about equality, freedom and human rights while it strives to make everyone less equal, less free and rob them of their human rights. And as for Trump, because of their stupidity, for them it's not going to be a long four years, but a very long eight years. Finally, guys, I'd like to thank Brian Martinez for my new channel art. He did a fantastic job. Thank you very much, Brian. And thank you guys for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.